as hyped as the OnePlus 12 was, the OnePlus 12R is actually the more practical, sensible option for most buyers. At least that's what I felt after looking at the specs and the price of the phone itself. Fun fact, the OnePlus 12R is actually the most affordable Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phone that you can buy right now. That's until the iQOO Neo 9 Pro launches. But what if you're considering between the OnePlus 12 and the OnePlus 12R? Should you pay more for the OnePlus 12 or save some money and settle for the OnePlus 12R? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out in this video. If you're here for the first time, I'm Ershad. You're watching Track It English. Your destination for detailed gadget reviews. Now, I really want to start by talking about the industrial design of the OnePlus 12R. Now, since there is no periscope camera like there is inside the OnePlus 12, OnePlus has managed to actually cram in a larger 5,500 mAh battery inside this phone and it's slimmer compared to the OnePlus 12. Plus, it's very obviously lighter as well. This is about 220 grams. This is about 207, 208 grams. That's not it. You now get a proper metal frame, Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the rear and on the front, you also get Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protection. Yup, all the materials used in the construction of the OnePlus 12 are, are the same as the OnePlus 12. There are no compromises whatsoever, but there's one tiny little difference. There's IP65 rating on the OnePlus 12, whereas the 12R has IP64 rating. Which, by the way, is not too different. It doesn't make too much of a difference in daily usage anyway. Now, the curved glass on the rear and the front blended into this metal frame actually makes it feel narrower than most phones out there, which makes the in-hand feel even better than, you know, most of the square bodied phones. I actually like the in-hand feel of the OnePlus 12R. It's very comfortable to hold and use. Also, it's lighter, which was my biggest concern with the OnePlus 12, if you remember. And I must say this, I'm a fan of this blue color. I actually like blue color phones a lot. In fact, I like the color blue in general. But if you don't like this one, you can pick the black one instead. Plus, the camera module on the OnePlus 12R looks very nice. It looks very similar to the more expensive OnePlus 12. Therefore, it maintains design homogeneity between, uh, you know, different lineups of phone. And when you're paying 40,000 for this phone, it feels very, very premium to hold and use. Remember the OnePlus 10R that launched with a plastic back? Thankfully, that's not the case with the OnePlus 12R. Now, the only non-premium inclusion on the OnePlus 12R is the fact that the USB Type-C port at the bottom is USB Type-C 2.0 speeds. It should have been Type-C Gen 3.2. It's a 40,000 rupee phone. You need to have faster USB speeds. That's for sure. And that's something that I've been saying in all of my videos. By the way, I must address one thing. There were some concerns about the build quality of the OnePlus 12 when the Chinese variant of the phone launched. But when it came to India, those concerns uh, have been completely negated. Somehow, the build quality seems to be way, way better than what the Chinese variants were, at least in the two units of the OnePlus 12 that we got. Similarly, for the OnePlus 12 there are no build quality issues whatsoever. It has been assembled really well. What's also identical on the 12R are the display specs, which is very similar to the 12, except for the display size and the display resolution, which of course is high higher on the OnePlus 12 compared to the 12R. As for the display specs, you get LTPO 120Hz AMOLED display. You get 1 billion color support. You get DCI-P3 color gamut support as well. There's support for Dolby Vision 2. And the peak brightness in HDR videos is rated at 4,500 nits. And in high brightness mode, which is HBM, you get 1,600 nits, which is the exact same specs as the OnePlus 12. But I must mention this. The typical brightness when you push the brightness slider to maximum is about 600 nits on uh, you know the OnePlus 12. And when you take it outdoors, outdoor visibility might not be the best compared to phones like, say, the iPhone 15 Pro Max or the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, which is also true for the OnePlus 12R. But considering the 12R is much more affordable, that is something that you can compromise with. But with the 12, I don't think that's a compromise that you can make. However, I've been seeing tweets about an update coming soon for the OnePlus 12, which will unlock a higher typical brightness of 800 nits. We'll have to wait and watch if that actually happens. Now, you must be wondering, what about that 4,500 nits of peak brightness that OnePlus keeps talking about in its marketing material? Well, that's basically the peak brightness that you can achieve in a 1% APL, which means that only 1% of the pixels get lit up to 4,500 nits, especially when you're watching HDR content uh, like Dolby Vision content on Netflix. And that's something that most regular users won't even notice and won't even care about. But well, they're not entirely wrong to market that number because technically the display can reach 4,500 nits, only that it can do in a 1% window. By the way, I did mention in a throwaway statement that Dolby Vision is supported on Netflix, but in the OnePlus 12 review, I said that it wasn't. That update has come. So the OnePlus 12 or the 12R do have Dolby Vision support on Netflix, which is very good. As for the color accuracy, both these displays are tuned very well. You cannot really tell the difference between the two when you're seeing them side by side. They're very close to neutral color accuracy and you get the DCI-P3 color gamut as well. So it's very good. Touch response rate has been fantastic on the OnePlus 12R like it was with the OnePlus 12. Nothing to complain about really. There's an optical in-display fingerprint scanner on the 12R, similar to the 
OnePlus 12 and both unlock really, really fast. But I did notice during testing that the OnePlus 12's haptic feedback is slightly tighter and slightly more defined compared to the OnePlus 12 R. I think that's the best way to put it. What's also slightly better tuned are the OnePlus 12's stereo speaker setup with Dolby Atmos. They do sound richer and fuller. Take a listen to it for yourself and let me know what you guys think. Now, if you're an audiophile, both these phones don't disappoint whatsoever. Of course, you don't get a headphone jack, but with the Type-C port, you can get 24-bit, 192-kilohertz audio with the right, uh, you know, USB dongle. That apart, you also get support for high-res wireless codecs like LHDC and LDAC over Bluetooth, which is very, very good. Overall, yes, the display and the speakers are slightly better tuned on the OnePlus 12 compared to the OnePlus 12R. The OnePlus 12R's display and speaker experience is almost 98% as good as the OnePlus 12. That's an arbitrary percentage metric that I've thrown at you guys. I'm going to be doing that all throughout this video. Seriously, just for Five. Now, talking about performance, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 inside the OnePlus 12R hasn't been tuned to be a performance beast. Now, that's the kind of performance tuning that OnePlus seems to be going for with their 2024 flagship because that is exactly what we experienced with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 tuning on the OnePlus 12. But OnePlus definitely uses that performance headroom that you get with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for better power efficiency. I'll talk more about that in the battery life segment when I come to that. In our testing, what I noticed is that the OnePlus 12R had the maximum antitu score that we've managed to achieve on a OnePlus phone with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 yet, which means that the OnePlus Open and the OnePlus 11 scored lower than the OnePlus 12R. But still, if you're talking about the best performing Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phones on antitu, it has to be the Asus ROG Phone 7 Ultimate and the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. By the way, if you're planning on buying the OnePlus 12R, you get two variants, 8 128 GB and 16 256 GB. And let it be known that the 128 GB variant of the phone has UFS 3.1 storage, so the storage Redite speeds will be slower compared to the UFS 4.0 storage used by the 256GB. Anyway, coming back to our testing, in our CPU throttle test where we engaged 40 threads for 30 minutes, the CPU didn't throttle as much, which is a good thing. So we got a CPU stability score of 72% in performance mode and 82% in, uh, you know, balanced mode, which is definitely better than the OnePlus 12. Even in our 3DMark wildlife test test run, the OnePlus 12 had returned a better stability, GPU stability compared to the OnePlus 12. It also didn't lose as much battery life and both these these phones got equally warm. In fact, both these phones do not get hot in daily operation or even when playing games, which is very, very good. I played Genshin Impact for 30 minutes at the highest graphics at 60 frames per second, and I got a respectable 59 frames per second on the OnePlus 12R and slightly more on the OnePlus 12 with Snapdragon Agent 3, which is, of course, to be expected. So overall, what I feel is that the Snapdragon Agent 2, of course, it's not as powerful as the Snapdragon Agent 3, but it doesn't throttle as much as the Snapdragon Agent 3 does, at least not in the way one plus tunes these phones. As for gaming, both these phones can run BGMI at 90 FPS, smooth graphics or Call of Duty Mobile at 120 FPS and medium graphics. Which means that the gaming experience is going to be very similar. The Snapdragon Agent 3 doesn't seem to have any immediate, you know, advantages of being more powerful because there are no games to exploit that performance. But if you want to see how much more powerful the Snapdragon Agent 3 is, just run the Solar Bay, uh, you know, test on 3D Mark. And that's a ray tracing test where the OnePlus 12 definitely beats the OnePlus 12R and by quite a margin. The real impact of Snapdragon Agent 3 is of course the AI processing prowess, but OnePlus' software doesn't do much like Samsung does with the Samsung Galaxy S24 series, which is where Samsung has a lot of edge this year. Which is why I still feel that the Snapdragon Agent 2 is a very, very good processor even in 2024, because you also get these phones for much cheaper. All that said, 99% of the people out there will probably find the OnePlus 12 are to be equally performing as the OnePlus 12, basically Snapdragon Agent 2 equal to Snapdragon Agent 3, at least in their usage. See, I threw another arbitrary percentage out there. But the kind of performance tuning that OnePlus does with these phones, you do get excellent battery life. Remember how I had said that the OnePlus 12 had fantastic battery life? I got a screen out time of about 6 or 17 minutes with the OnePlus 12 R, but this is when I was properly battery battering the phone. Three hours of continuous GTA San Andreas can suck through the battery life. So that's what happened with the WordPress 12R. Having said that, when I did use it regularly and I wasn't stress testing it, I could get over nine hours of screen on time, which is slightly higher than what even the OnePlus 12's eight hours uh, that we got with it. You also get the 100 watt Superbook charger inside the box of both these phones, which means that you can charge from 0 to 100 in about, you know, 30, 35 minutes. But I must mention this, OnePlus should provide a proper Type-C to Type-C charger inside the box, a proper 65 watt support GAN charger with USB PD support as well, which by the way, IQ is doing it with its phones, if you remember. By the way, I completely forgot to mention the OnePlus 12 has one advantage over the 12R is that it supports wireless charging, which the OnePlus 12R does not. And I think it's a 
okay compromise to make as for networking capabilities both these phones offer everything that you need and nothing that you don't basically you get support for wi-fi 7 bluetooth 5.3 a lot of 5g bands on you know the oneplus 12 r and whenever i tested the network performance on the oneplus 12 r it was fantastic the earpiece quality is crisp it's loud i have absolutely no complaints i know that a lot of reviewers don't really talk about the call quality or the speaker performance and i understand that you know why they don't talk about it because they are generally very very good on phones these days unless some brand messes it up which never happens now let's talk about the software experience in fact i have spoken at length about oxygen os 14 based on android 14 and the experience that you get with it if you want to know all the details about it a link should pop up right now go check it out basically what you can expect on the oneplus 12 with the 12 r is a clean bloat free experience with a lot of features that are definitely very useful as well of course it looks very similar to color os but oxygen os now is very clean as well and color os is, isn't too bad either the only advantage of the oneplus 12 is that oneplus is promising four years of software updates on the oneplus 12 compared to three years of software update on the oneplus 12 r but the other major advantage on the 12 over the 12 r is that it has superior camera setup compared to this phone but while camera specs are one thing the devil lies in the details so let's take a look at the pictures so the oneplus 12's stacked sony lyt808 sensor definitely has dollops of details when you look at the 100% crop of this specific comparison sample. The 12R is sharp enough but doesn't match the detailed retention and the edge definition of the OnePlus 12's image both at the center and around the corners as well. As for the color reproduction, the OnePlus 12 tries to stay true to scene where the OnePlus 12R adds more contrast and punch to the colors. But it's tastefully done without going overboard and changing the true colors entirely so I kind of like the OnePlus 12R's picture out here. Now in our first HDR sample, the differences in tuning is barely visible but but a very close peek into the shadow regions showcase that OnePlus 12R has more shadow noise compared to 12 slightly more detailed processing. Although in the second image, the HDR performance of the 12R is incredibly better, especially with the shadow correction, which is brighter and nicely achieved. My only concern here is the purple chromatic Moir aberration on the chair which has been cleanly reproduced as black by OnePlus 12 because it doesn't do any sort of overprocessing and I'd say depending on the situation, both these phones get HDR right. Skin tone rendition is near accurate on the OnePlus 12 thanks to the Hasselblad tuning. OnePlus 12R has a red face problem and the color of the jeans has been incorrectly reproduced as well. However, the accurate skin tones with the Hasselblad tuning are only when the HDR doesn't kick in. When the HDR kicks in, the skin tone goes for a toss. As for the HDR performance in this comparison set, the shadow retrieval is slightly better on the OnePlus 12 12R, but both ha have done exceptionally well in terms of HDR tuning without going overboard. Now, if you want to take great looking portraits, then OnePlus 12 is the way to go. Mostly because you don't just get 1x, you get 2x and 3x portrait options as well. And the quality of the portrait pictures shot by the OnePlus 12 are so good. It has way better edge detection and bokeh recreation compared to the OnePlus 12R. But when I checked the low light samples captured from these phones, I was surprised by the result. Completely taken aback if you ask me. The 12R is actually better than the OnePlus 12. You get more details in the picture, especially around the darker shadow region, which is true for the second image as well. On both the phones, the OnePlus algorithm definitely has an issue with white balance correction because the OnePlus 12 gets it wrong in the first image, the 12R gets it wrong in the second one. Now, why I feel that the OnePlus 12R has better low light performance compared to the OnePlus 12 is because the 12R actually opens up the shutter for longer without worrying about, you know, shutter lag which is seems to be a problem with the OnePlus 12 because it's so confident with this tuning. It's like, no, 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 let me not open the shutter for too long. Let me quickly take a picture. In that pursuit, the OnePlus 12 loses out on bringing in slightly more exposure in the darker shadow regions as well. Now, moving on to ultrawides, there is no doubt in my mind that the OnePlus 12 is superior, for sure, thanks to that higher resolution sensor. Firstly, you get sharper details and textures compared to the 12R's 8 megapixel ultrawide, which is not too bad, honestly. I was surprised that this 8MP camera could even achieve this much in the first place. Anyway, moving on. Second, Secondly, the colors are matched on the primary and ultrawide samples on the OnePlus 12. The same is not true for the OnePlus 12R as you can tell for yourself. And finally, the OnePlus 12's low light ultrawide doesn't have smudged details like the ones captured by the OnePlus 12R. And let's not forget that you get a proper 3x periscope on the OnePlus 12 which is great for zoom performance compared to 2x digitally zoomed shots of the OnePlus 12R. Another area where the 12 comfortably beats the 12R is in selfie performance. Whether you look at the sharpness of the skin tones or if you look at the HDR performance or if you look at the portraits or if you look at the low light performance, the OnePlus 12 beats the OnePlus 12R. Another advantage of the new 32 megapixel selfie camera on the OnePlus 12 is that you can shoot 4K 30fps videos where the OnePlus 12R tops out at 1080p 30fps and the difference in quality is immediately visible. Also, the higher resolution sensor on the ultrawide means that you can shoot 4K videos even using the ultrawide on the OnePlus 12 which is definitely better than the OnePlus 12R's 1080p 30fps option. Finally, you can also shoot with the OnePlus 12's telephoto camera which is of course of better quality than the 12R's digitally zoomed videos. 
videos. But when you look at the 4K 60 FPS rear video camera comparison, which is what most people are going to be using, the results are very interesting because there's nothing separating the two. You get the same details, you get the same HDR performance, you get the same stabilization quality, even the sound quality is very similar and it is the same audio video bitrate capture as well. Take a look at the video and listen to the audio for yourself and let me know what you guys think. Alright, right now I'm recording using the rear facing camera of OnePlus 12R and OnePlus 12. Alright, right now I'm recording using the rear facing camera of OnePlus 12R and OnePlus 12. So it goes without saying that the OnePlus 12 has a better tuned camera and of course it, it's got better hardware as well. And that's one reason why a lot of people would probably gravitate towards the OnePlus 12. But it's still not the best camera phone out there. In fact, at the price of the OnePlus 12, you can get slightly better camera phones as well. In fact, I like the iQOO 12's cameras better. However, I was surprised at how close the OnePlus 12R can get in certain situations and sometimes even beat the OnePlus 12 especially in low light performance, which was very, very surprising to me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Coming straight to the point, 90% of what you can do with the OnePlus 12 can be achieved with the OnePlus 12R as well. Final arbitrary percentage metric, I promise you guys. So if you want to be practical and sensible, go for the OnePlus 12R and not the OnePlus 12. But if you want the latest SOC wireless charging, a 3X periscope camera, and a better tuned camera with Hasselblad branding, at least that gives it some bit of an edge, then pay the extra for the OnePlus 12. I will however tell you this, the gap between the R phone and the non-R phone is reducing every launch. And I don't think I'm complaining or neither are the buyers because the 12R is a fantastic buy of 40,000 rupees. At 45,000 rupees, primarily because I would suggest that you go for the 16 GB to 26 GB variant. Anyway, what do you guys think of this review? Uh, I hope you guys liked it. And if you have any comments or suggestions, let me know in the comment section below. Give us a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe to our channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.